Okay, hello everybody. So, got another lesson in geometry for you all. Um, don't worry about all of this, we're not learning this just yet. <laughs> so if you just looked at the screen and then you started uh, absolutely shitting yourself, <laughs> don't worry about it because um, we'll get to this part later. We'll certainly, uh, so this is the ionic column that you're looking at, okay? So this is the Roman ionic, here's the plan view. This is the elevation view that I'm constructing. So you will be getting to this. You know, you are going to uh, learn these things. But that's not actually what I wanted to show you today. We're going to get to that chapter uh, later on in the course. And as you can see, you've got a hell of a lot of work to do. This is the section view that I'm carving out at the moment there. Now, the topic of today's lesson is constructing a curve of a certain radius, okay? So have a look at this elevation view of the ionic column as if we're looking at it from the side. So this is the front view here, and this is the side view. And have a look at the bolsters, which are attached to the volutes. The volutes are these spirals, okay? These sort of circular formations. And from the side view, this is what they look like from the side. And these are basically the bolsters which are attached to the side of the ionic column. Uh, we're going to explore the anatomy of this column later on, so you don't have to concern yourself too much. But have a look at this top part, and have a look at this circle that I've constructed. So basically, the column, if I just switch off fine lines, maybe we can see it a bit better. But there's this curvature, which is how I've designed this particular part. And I wanted to use this radius here as marked by this dotted circle. And the reason I wanted to use that curvature was because I used that curve to construct this part on the, uh, on the plan view. And it's also here. So these red lines are basically representing the radius of that arc that I used to construct the curves. And so when you're trying to use a certain radius, it can be very difficult to place it correctly. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did here. So let's come down to this example here. This is basically the top of the bolster, um, which I'll just finish drawing that part. I, I don't have to draw the whole thing. You can kind of understand. And so we want to place this curve so that it's flush with this horizontal line and it attaches directly into this corner right here. That's the tricky part. And the only information that we have is the radius of it, which is this red line here. So bit of a difficult construction, but I'll show you a little uh, technique that you can use. I mean, if you're doing everything on computers, then it's a lot easier because it, you know, the computers can kind of just do the work for you to a degree. But drafting manually, as you know, requires a few extra steps. So let's say you know the radius of the curve, which is this red line. This is what you're going to use to construct the arc. You're going to bring that red line down onto this horizontal line here because this is where you want that curve to be flush. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> I don't know why it decided to. Okay, all right. How about, maybe I'll just copy it. There we go. All right, back to the lesson. Sorry about that. So you'll just take your radius and you just place it somewhere on that horizontal line, right? So you know the height of the radius. And we want that curve to be flush with this horizontal line. We don't want it coming out at a sharp angle or anything like that. It just needs to be a smooth, gradual curve from horizontal, gradually curving up to there, right? So we know the radius. And then I reckon what you would do from there is you would use your T-square, draw a horizontal line from that radius, okay?
right here. Now, if you were to draw a circle from that point down to the bottom of your radius there, and I'll just move these two out of the way so they don't cross through our drawing, you can see how the curve we're drawing falls a little bit short of where we need to go. We want this curve to touch this horizontal line right there. So then what you could do is you would keep your compass on the same radius and you could just slide it across. until it touches where you need to go, right? So you basically just slide the point of your compass on that horizontal construction line, the dotted line there, until it hits pretty much where you need it to go. And then that's the arc that you construct. So that's a very simple way of doing that. So look, that, that's a basic way to do it. You just construct that horizontal line from the center of that radius there and then you can just slide the point of your compass until you get the arc that you need but the problem with that is that does require a little bit of trial and error like you have to sort of sketch that in until you get it into the right place so to be a little bit more accurate just take the same radius so with your compass take the same radius and place the center of your compass on this corner here because this is where you want your curve to be attaching to right so you place that there so you can see I've got two circles of the arc that I need and you can see if I draw a line here now This is actually, if you draw a line from this point to where that arc crosses that horizontal construction line, that's actually the radius that you need. So then what you would do is you would center your compass on that point where the arc and the horizontal line cross through each other. And there you go. You've constructed the exact curve that you need. So. If I just delete these extra constructions here and I move this radius to that point so it attaches to that red line, you can see they are the exact same measurement. And all that's left for you to do is to draw that arc from here to there and you've got it. So a bit of an exercise in geometry for you. But that's a method that I like to use if I need it, if I need a, a certain radius to be placed in a certain position. Um, very useful, very, very useful trick. It's probably one you want to get familiar with, I think, because um, this is the only method that would work for this particular part of the drawing. So practice that one. Um, and we will move on to the next lesson.